14-day lockdown begins. St. John are first responders. And shops caught hiking prices. This is the National MTV News with Helen Sayer. Good evening and thanks for joining us for Tuesday's news. The state of emergency on COVID-19 bill is expected to be tabled when the Marape Stephen government recalls parliament. The SOE will contain finalized measures in place. Currently, traffic and public transport is being allowed while provincial movement is being restricted. Penalties for people who do not follow SOE measures will be imposed in the bill to allow police to arrest and charge offenders. Is only this morning at 9 a.m., the police minister giving a brief update on the progress of COVID-19. 84 passengers or 84 people traveled on the single four flight. There were 77 passengers, seven crew. So most of them have been tracked down. And all of them have indicated that they did not have flu symptoms. And they are being monitored. Now past the 14 day, there are procedures and practice in place even to the 21 day. They will be checked again. Now I so said, God willing, that in the next, uh, by now to Friday, that there was no transmission from that confirmed patient to anyone else. Minister Kramer also clarifying that local traffic within cities and towns will be allowed, but only crossing from provincial borders will be restricted. In terms of as the decision by the Marape Stephen government, as announced yesterday, the Prime Minister, that there will be business as usual within provinces. We are only locking down basically province to province. So while we're carrying out contact tracing or the health department, WHO, contact running health, uh, contact tracing, in the event we find any case or a cluster, we know that we'll be able to better manage it. Another clarification that movement of garden goods between provinces will also be allowed. We have to do our part, the Marape Stephen government, the Prime Minister, has tasked us to ensure that those containers are offloaded, cleared without delay to get into those shops so mums and dads can buy food for their family. So in addition to that, any uh, transportation of garden food between provinces will be allowed. But this will all need to go to Parliament to be passed. So to answer your questions in terms of there's no specific police have powers invested in them that already exist in law that they can quarantine or lock someone to detain them for 72 hours. So we need the support of members of the public to cooperate with police during this period and the appropriate authorities like health. This will include penalties for people who break SOE measures. Yesterday, the police commissioner stating that 12 people had to be flown back from Daru to Port Moresby after they went against instructions for self-isolation for 14 days. This state of emergency is only the next 14 days. So we are now assessing the situation. If the situation accelerates, we will then convene an emergency parliament. But again, these decisions will only come with the approval and consent of the Prime Minister. But this is so the public aware we are very much, the Marpe Stephen government is very much prepared and putting in place measures if we have to escalate to address uh, this issue of COVID-19. Adelaide Sirox Kari, National MTV News. The nationwide 14-day lockdown against the spread of COVID-19 in Papua New Guinea started today, hours after the first positive case was flown out of the country. The isolation phase means there will be partial closure of essential services, no domestic flights and no movement of people on public transport services between provinces, while schools have taken an advanced term to break. Each province has established task force teams involving medical and law enforcement officers to respond to any case of coronavirus reported in their provinces. Meanwhile, essential government services sectors like banking, shops and hospitals will remain open during the lockdown. Space. The government has declared a state of emergency in Papua New Guinea for a 30-day period following the first positive COVID-19 case reported in the country last Friday. If it is established that it has spread amongst us, I encourage the country not to be patient. It is a flu-like uh, disease. Uh, it is a pandemic. 
uh, we will try our absolute best to mobilize government resources from within uh, 2020 budget envelopes as well as mobilizing uh, multilaterals and bilateral partners who've indicated a support to us and in this meeting that I just come out of where governors are now being linked and provincial governments are now linked to the central coordination uh, center here at the Morata House, we will coordinate it better going into the future. That 14 day shutdown will give us an opportunity to pinpoint exactly where the virus is if it is still in our country. However, the opposition says the declared SOE was done outside the laws of the country and does not have full legal standing until parliament is recalled and an emergency act is passed. If this is not uh, made, uh, if the acts are not uh, properly enacted through parliament and the orders that has been issued now, uh, are not been uh, properly passed in Parliament, then it's, it's unlawful. So I want to assure the people of this country that opposition will have no option but to take the matter through a Supreme Court challenge. Since COVID-19 has been declared as a breach of security, provincial task force teams have been set up to minimize the spread of coronavirus. And Papua New Guineans have been advised to practice social distancing, wash hands regularly with soap for 20 seconds, and avoid crowded areas. There will be no domestic flights and PMVs will not be allowed to travel from one province to the other. However, exceptions will only be made on the transportation of goods, medical supplies and petroleum products into the Highlands region. In the central province, all four main highways leading into Port Mosby will be temporarily closed as the provincial government mobilizes an awareness team to inform locals on the precautionary measures against COVID-19. So when I come into the village to do awareness, I want to see that our people out in the, in the community is working. No more gatherings. No more church services. Uh, you can have your church service out in the open if you want, but no more in the church. Everybody needs to start doing things outdoors. Uh, no more sports. We're cutting down all sports now. No more sports programs in the communities until further notice. No community programs until such time as we see. My advice to the villagers is that don't get around, stay within your own clothes, your house, your house, your family. Go to the garden as a family. Go fishing or whatever, come back and stay as a, flip, as a unit. Keep your distance. Meanwhile, 32 samples have been tested at the Institute of Medical Research in Garoka. 19 of them have come back negative, while the results of 13 are yet to be disclosed. Regionally, Fiji has reported three confirmed cases, while French Polynesia has announced 23 confirmed cases, five of which are newly reported. Seklagunga, National MTV News. An economic intervention was announced for employees as effects of COVID-19 trickles down to our national economy. Following a meeting with the Bank of PNG governor and CEOs of other commercial banks, Prime Minister James Marapa said specific economic interventions will be made for employees, individuals and business. However, opposition leader Belda Nama says before such financial decisions can be made, Parliament should be recalled to decide upon this. Oh, let me thank our financial uh, uh, institutions, our banks, as well as our, our two super funds and our central bank for the understanding that our economy uh, is interlinked to what is happening outside globally in our region as well as domestically and they're very understanding towards tailoring an economic package that should lift the burden of many Papua New Guineans who will be going through these trying times, especially those who have uh, loans and uh, uh, attached with the banks with repayment schedules. We are working to ensure that banks are considerate that these are trying times and they need to be lighter on Papua New Guineans who, are, who may be stressed. This will have a lot of implications. See, when you recall Parliament, you pass Emergency Act, then the enabling legislation and the orders to run the state of emergency. You probably declare once the, uh, it's uh, on the National Gazette, and once the, the emergency acts and the uh, necessary regulation and the orders are made 
lawful by parliament, through an act of parliament, the next thing you do is you have financial implication. And the financial implication is to run the state of emergency. You cannot go on the street and start begging people to bring money to run your state of emergency. Parliament is the right place. And like I said in, in my many statements, two things, three things you do. One, you recall parliament. Two, you declare a state of emergency. Three, you pass a supplementary budget. Those three things, they go together. You're watching National MTV News. We'll have more updates on the coronavirus after the break. Stay with us. Welcome back. The Bulolo District Authority has set up a COVID-19 emergency response team. Bulolo MP Sam Basso says because the imported case was identified in his district, the response team will focus on preventing and containing the potential spread of the virus. Morabe Police Commander Alex Ndrasal said roadblocks to restrict and monitor the movement of people in and out of the district started today. Lucy Kopana with this report. The Bulolo District authorities and stakeholders have resolved to transport boarding students at Bayun, Bwang and the Grace Memorial Secondary School back to their homes as one of the measures that are being taken. In addition, business houses are being called to put in place health and hygiene measures in their operations, according to the statement by Bulolo MP Sam Basil. He said because the first COVID-19 case was identified in Bulolo, the district has to manage the risks of having any possible outbreaks. The COVID-19 patient was an expatriate working at Harmony Gold's Hidden Valley Mine. He arrived in Bulolo after returning to the country from Spain two weeks ago. He was evacuated to Australia yesterday. And uh, we are in the district, we are making sure that we are watching what the provincial government is going to do as well. And we will also work with the provincial government team in ensuring that we provide the necessary assistance that is needed. From Basil says while the restrictions are being imposed, food and other necessary items will continue to be supplied unhindered. The district health will also be requesting the supply of personal protection equipment, kits and thermal guns for COVID-19 operations in the district. Moreover, Provincial Police Commander Alex Drassel said the movement of people in and out of the Bulolo district will be closely monitored by police starting today at identified sections of the Bulolo Highway. All seven Amiblai, targeting Bulolo district, long, strictly moving or monitoring this movement from all people. So all got a car, PMVs, uh, even the bigger trucks uh, will be closely monitored. PMVs will be seized immediately, will not be traveling. The district is enforcing the National Gazette to stop all public gatherings and large events, including the public markets. Schools have been suspended and public markets closed. Quarantine and inspection checks will be done by the health, police and district officials at Gebensis, Warabung, Coal Mountain and the Tekadu Track. These are the exit and entry points in and out of the Bulolo district. Lucy Kopana, National MTV News. Shoppers in Port Moresby were left frustrated after discovering that price tags of goods had been removed from consumable items. The Independent Consumer and Competition Commission released a statement today confirming having received a number of complaints of the sudden hike in prices and shops taking advantage of the panic shopping citizens. ICCC has vowed to come down hard on these retailers. Price gorging is immoral and affects all consumers, particularly the most vulnerable groups of people in communities, especially the elderly, the sick and children. An amateur video taken here shows nothing in the way of price of goods along the shelves of a popular shopping centre in the Hohola suburb of Port Moresby. Shoppers also claiming that there had been a sudden spike in the price of goods sold there. <laughs> Okay. 
MTV News, after contacting ICCC Commissioner and CEO Paulus Ein, prompted the release of a statement reiterating that basic and staple consumables like rice are subject to price regulation by ICCC under a price monitoring approach and that there is no reason for retailers and wholesalers to suddenly hike prices during this state of emergency. Commissioner Ayn articulates that this type of conduct by certain businesses have the potential to stifle efforts to contain the virus in the communities. <laughs> As a result, the ICCC is coming down hard on these retailers who are taking advantage of this state of emergency, charging excessive prices on basic household goods like rice, flour and sugar, adding that ICCC will be publishing a list of goods and services that have been approved by the Minister for Treasury to be closely monitored during this state of emergency, and that those who are found to be price-gorging consumers during this state of emergency will be arrested by police and will also face significant and fines under this state of emergency, strongly emphasizing and requesting that the business community refrain from increasing prices on goods and services. Anit Kora, National MTV News. The National Department of Health, with the backing of Police Commissioner David Manning, who is also the State of Emergency Controller, have requested the support of health workers and St. John Ambulance to assist with the Emergency Operations Center in Port Moresby. Their call to action is to scale up operations for the COVID-19 hotline to handle and assist callers. In an effort to provide much-needed awareness support during the state of emergency COVID-19 lockdown in the country, the National St. John Ambulance, with the advice from the Secretary of Health, the Health Department COVID-19 Emergency Operations Team, and the State of Emergency Controller and Police Commissioner David Manning, is working closely with the Royal Papua New Guinea Constabulary on the SOE Task Force in the National Operations Center. Speaking with MTV News, St. John CEO Matthew Cannon gives an update since commencing operations in the call center. This is to ensure that we can support the health and security activities of the government. We are conducting awareness across the National Capital District by, with and through the NCD COVID-19 Task Force. Since 9 a.m. yesterday, St. John's staff has around the clock been manning the National COVID-19 Call Center. We have fielded over a thousand calls in this time. And we're, we're handling calls related to COVID-19 suspected cases and this information is being given to the health department surveillance teams. We're also fielding a large number of inquiries from the general public about the state of emergency restrictions. As information comes to hand, we'll be making this available. At the time being, we're doing what is possible and ask for patience. Adding also that the ambulance crew have also been working closely with the Port Moresby General Hospital to ensure that efficient transport is provided if a suspected case is to present itself in the nation's capital and or if there is a life-threatening emergency. Our advice at the moment is if you have mild symptoms that you think could be covered, please stay where you are, isolate yourself, call the covered hotline for advice. 1-800-200. Wait for advice and a call back from the Department of Health surveillance team. They are handling a large number of calls at the moment. If it is a medical emergency, you can dial 111 for St John Ambulance within the NCD and Central Province areas. Reiterating the all too familiar message of precautionary measures to take when out and about in public areas. The message is clear. Wash your hands with soap and water regularly. Keep social distancing in public places or on public transport like PMBs. This is at least one metre between you and any other person. Stay home when possible. Follow the advice from the police and health authorities. Anit Kora, National MTV News. Bonapa Brown local level government in the Karukahiri district of Central Province passed its pioneer budget yesterday. Among the fears and lockdown of the coronavirus, President Lucien Rove says relevant funding will assist levels of government deliver basic services to people. The 307,000 Kina budget was passed yesterday at the Vanapa Brown local level government chamber. 
a very significant occasion for people in the Vanapa Brown LLG. Assembly members including President Lucien Rove and Karukuiri MP Peter Iso Aimo were present to witness the LLG's first budget. The budget was unopposed by three quarters of the chamber members. This follows the ending down of the central provincial budget earlier this month. And as mentioned during the sitting, uh, we've asked for our councillors that we will need the support, the commitment, and their leadership also, in order that we'll try to work within the means of what's coming down from the provincial and at the national level to deliver the much needed services to our rural population within one of our brown LLG. Vanapa Brown is a newly created local level government in the Karukuiri district of Central Province. It is one of the heavily populated areas along the Hiritano Highway. It will host the next biggest electricity project, the Edevu Hydropower Plant. For the LLG president, he has urged ward councillors to identify basic projects so funding is made available to assist wards. As a newly proclaimed LLG and a newly mandated president for this LLG, I am needing the full support of all my ward members to work together closely in order that we will try to deliver the much needed services to people down there within the Wanapa Brown LLG area. Meanwhile, communities in the Wanapa Brown LLG will soon witness the commissioning of the Rural Electrification Project funded by the Government of New Zealand. Jack Lapava Jr. National MTV News. With the first COVID-19 case identified in PNG, Octeri Mining's primary concern remains to prevent the virus entering its operations and communities. In a statement, Managing Director Peter Graham said the repatriation of expatriate employees and contractors continued over the weekend with three charter flights to Cairns from Tabubil. The company has cancelled all bookings for international travellers scheduled to return to Tabubil via Port Moresby, except pilots and air crew for its chartered aircrafts returning empty from overseas. The government announced a ban on domestic flights for the next 14 days, prevents national crews due for break in the next 14 days from travelling out and relief crews returning to site. Middle Fly MP Roy Biyama says he stands ready to fight COVID-19 should it enter his district in the Western Province. He stated that the Prime Minister has given strict orders to not accept anyone crossing the border and they will be abiding by directives issued. However, there is still so much that needs to be done in terms of awareness and helping the people understand what COVID-19 is. As a 14-day travel ban comes into effect today, the country's borders are also under strict inspection. The Balimo Township, located in the Middle Fly District, has an estimated population of over 4,000 people. Middle Fly MP Roy Biyama says he is prepared to fund the fight against coronavirus should it enter his district. I'm ready to at least fight it, you know, fund it. I'll make sure that I will, before I leave, the air patrols are going to be really strict. We have to at least uh, help our people. However, for many in Balimo, they have no idea what is happening around the world. Page Ward member of the Balimo Urban LLG, Walia Sawasi, told MTV News that the only way he heard about the pandemic was when a family member called him from Daru. No, we, we are cut off from the outside world, so we don't know what's happening. We only hear when they're calling us from the mobile phones that get ready, this thing is coming. This. He also mentioned that not much awareness has been done and he will be doing that this week. So I started telling the people, get ready, get ready. After this event, uh, we will have uh, awareness to the people community. Health Secretary of Balimo District Hospital, Hector Morris, raised the same concerns. He stated that should COVID-19 seep into Balimo, it will greatly affect both the skeleton nursing staff and the people. Arrives in Balimo will be a great challenge for us. It will be a really great challenge for us. We are not, uh, I should say, prepared. Uh, we're not prepared. We don't have the basic, uh, like the protective gears that should be on the ground. We don't have the like the hand sanitizers. This one that should be present in our heart, uh, in our outpatient. Uh, the protection is the very key thing. 
And the awareness bit is the other very key thing. People have to be aware. In Daru Town, Daru Secondary School closed down at noon yesterday in line with the 14 day lockdown. Stand by the uh, decision by the NSC. Whatever decision they have instructed, and right now the secular is in place. Uh, we are tidying out currently at this time as I'm speaking this morning. We are tidying out and we are uh, going to uh, release the students as a nationwide information that all schools must close down. Lillian Soperakinea, National MTV News. And now looking at the Nasfund market report, the Kina opened unchanged at 0.292 US dollars in the interbank market. At Bank South Pacific, your Kina was buying 0.2845 US dollars, 0.4859 Australian dollars, 0.2573 Euro and 30.95 Japanese yen. Looking at commodity prices at New York close, gold is trading higher. Coffee and cocoa closed higher, while copra closed the day lower. Palm oil closed higher, crude oil is trading higher, while copper closed the day lower. And on the stock market, the Dow Jones closed at 582.05 points lower. The ASX is trading at 98.26 points higher. And the old ordinaries is trading at 96.97 points higher. And you at National MTV News will take a short break. Governor General Grand Chief Sir Bob Dada endorsed state of emergency. That story after the break. Welcome back to the news. A state of emergency has been endorsed by the Governor General for two weeks. The police minister giving the update on COVID-19 this afternoon stating that contact tracing is being done and testing carried out on selected persons of contact due to the limited number of testing kits. Minister Kramer stating this afternoon that Australia would be helping with test kits as the government has requested for 10,000 testing kits to be sent to PNG. Tests have come back negative. The police minister explaining that the constitution caters for a 14-day state of emergency and if needed would be brought to parliament to be extended. So the constitution does provide that when, it, when a state of emergency is declared, as soon as practical, no less than 15 days, parliament must convene. Yes, so this is only a 14-day state of emergency. This is not a one month or three months. After 14 days, the Prime Minister and NEC will make a decision on whether or not to extend, depending on the circumstance. Issue of contact tracing was also brought up of the 84 passengers on the Singapore flight and the lay flight not being recalled for testing. Minister Kramer explained that due to limited number of test kits, a selected number of people will be tested first. Kramer stated contact tracing is still ongoing and after 14 days since the initial flight and symptoms show, then testing will be done. If they, of those contact tracing that two or three people is in a province, we will not send uh, large test ki quit, uh, kits to the province. We will only focus on those that we are testing in that province. Yes. So uh, governors and members of parliament um, have contacted, again insisting when can they get the kits. The answer is we cannot confirm a time at this point. We're waiting for us for the kits to come in from other donor partners and then we plan who should get the kits first based on who's at high risk. So if there's zero chance of it being um, on Manus, then the focus of the test kits is obviously in Port Moresby and Leigh because that's the port of entry. Meanwhile, the government has requested to Australia for 10,000 testing kits. So we will find out, I guess, in the next 24 hours of the percentage that Australian government can provide. We've made a formal request for 10,000 and hopefully they will come in the country in the next 24 to 48 hours. But again, testing isn't the critical issue now, is to be able to track down those at a high risk and also obviously maintain the lines uh, so Papua New Guineans, the public can call in and the rapid response team can go down. But right now there is no evidence whatsoever. It's not to say there isn't any cases of COVID-19 in the country, but right now there is no evidence of any cases of COVID-19 in the country. The minister 
unable to confirm how many out of 13 samples sent to Goroka. PNG Institute of Medical Research have come back negative, but says to give a detailed report tomorrow. Thekla Gunga, National MTV News. The COVID-19 security operation is progressing well in NCD. NCD and Central Divisional Commander Anthony Wagambi Jr. gave an update on Facebook today. He said they are working closely with the health department, the central provincial government and the COVID-19 National Joint Task Force team to assist in the state of emergency lockdown period. Policy that work long, work long enforcing. We plan forcing this plan law. So we plan by stopping plenty or gathering sporting activities too. You may stop him. You may not play sports. You may not go to the club. You may not go to the club. We plan to the government. We put him order now. Now, we work on police. I'm looking for him. We sing out long over there. People blame me. Please, me like him cooperation with you plan. This plan seek, you know, fight law with me one one. And fight law with me over there. Law save him to me. You may over there as responsible. Salim boy, Kai Kai boy, and you can walk in by Sikia by spread big plan. Sikia, I mean, easy to spread. Time, plenty of people boom one time. All the government agency come inside now long, supporting this plan. Walk long, stop him, spread long this plan. This is, he may hire him to. No, so much time to solve. Give him time, but government is killing him. Am he all right? And you go back to normal life. Now I'm time for emergency. Me ask him to big cooperation, but you know what? Please. When I'm something, you may put him behind him, you may behind him. The Morabe Provincial Executive Council has approved the release of 1.5 million kina for Morabe's COVID-19 response efforts. The PEC made the decision yesterday. The funding will be used to boost the province's state of readiness. Health teams have been out in full force to increase the level of awareness in the community. This morning, Governor Ginson Saonu announced additional funding from the Morabe Provincial Government for the ongoing COVID-19 prevention efforts. The funding will go towards supporting the Provincial Health Authority and security forces who've just been authorized for a state of emergency call-out. Member Blulay, when the DDA in, only making one million kina commitment finish. Now, we are putting 1.5 million on top of it. Now, we are got 2.5 million now. For Morobe, where the first case was confirmed just days ago, the state of readiness is being worked on and fine tuned every day. The Provincial Health Authority is the lead agency, and they're being backed by the Lay District, the Lay Chamber of Commerce, the Provincial Government, and the three disciplinary forces. By the end of the month, Morbe will have more than 60 beds ready at the Angau Hospital in case of an outbreak. Test kits and other vital equipment are also being brought in from Australia as the authority contends with a global shortage of equipment. Of our hospital has been in touch with other members um, from the districts of Morabe. Uh, they've been in close discussion about what we're doing, which is around the education. That's why you know, we've been in touch with everybody. Um, and they're all willing to, to put, put in. They know that this is, this is not a fight by the Morabe PHA or the provincial government or the member for Lay. In Lay today, evidence of a 14-day lockdown kicking in. Fewer people. Shops have been told that they can operate so that panic buying is prevented from happening. All non-essential businesses like bottle shops and horse races are banned. And as of today, inter-provincial travel for the public came to a halt. Scott Whitey, National MTV News, Lay. The University of Papua New Guinea has cancelled classes in line with the 14-day lockdown. Movements in and out of the Waigani, Taurama and open centres will be restricted to essential personnel only. As the country is going into a state of emergency with no classes, work and social gathering, the University of Papua New Guinea is imposing strict restrictions to people coming in and out of its grounds. The university community that is, all staff and students and essential service providers must adopt personal conduct and practices to prevent the transmission of the virus. This includes the practice of social distancing. UPNG Chancellor Robert Igara says these measures will require patient cooperation from all members of the university. UPNG will also be postponing its graduation. Given the uncertainties and risks 
The university has also decided that the 20th, 2020 graduation ceremony, which we had planned for 23rd April 2020, is postponed until we are able to confidently assess the threat and risk posed by the COVID-19 virus to the university. The university has also established a COVID-19 virus risk oversight committee chaired by Chancellor Robert Igara and a COVID-19 virus risk management group at the university administration chaired by Vice Chancellor Professor Frank Griffin. The administration has also taken precautionary measures to quarantine any staff or student who shows signs and symptoms of COVID-19 at one of their unused residential hall in the campus. Vice Chancellor Professor Frank Griffin says the primary task of the university is to secure the health and safety of the students, the staff, and their families. We also uh, call in on all the staff and students in this uh, in this time of lockdown or the state of emergency that has been imposed by the government to obey the uh, conditions of the uh, state of emergency itself which means that we need to also restrict our movements in and around the campus as well as around the, the, the city itself. Non-residential students and non-essential staff of the university have been requested not to return to the campus until end of that 14-day period from March 23rd through Monday 6th April 2020. Michelle Steven, National MTV News. Three new countries in Africa have confirmed positive cases of COVID-19 as of yesterday. World Health Organization statistics shows all these positive cases were important transmissions, similar to the case of Papua New Guinea. Globally, the death toll has reached 14,510. Over 1,720 were reported in the last 48 hours. 40,000 new cases were reported as of yesterday, bringing the global confirmed cases to nearly 332,930. In the Western Pacific region, Australia has reported 1,396 confirmed cases, New Zealand 102 confirmed cases and Fiji 4 confirmed cases which were transmitted locally. While there are no records of local transmission within PNG as yet, Papua New Guineans are advised to wash hands regularly with soap for at least 20 seconds, maintain social distancing and keep out of crowded areas. Coming up next, some sporting updates in Chukai Sports. Don't go away. Chukai Sports. Welcome to Chukai Sports. Olympic athletes are growing increasingly frustrated by the IOC's delay in making a call on postponing the Tokyo Games. Their overwhelming support to moving the event to next year, even if it means for some, getting to the Games only gets harder. And make it now. New Zealand's athletes and para athletes wanting some clarity around the postponement of the Olympics so they can replan their approach to the Games. A survey was conducted this morning. We had a great response. Our athletes would like a postponement, and I think they want clarity, certainly in these uncertain times. Respected Canadian IOC member Dick Pound has broken rank, confirming Tokyo 2020 will be postponed. But as the IOC gives itself four weeks to make an official call, anxiety continues to mount. I think there's uh, an overwhelming feeling of frustration. The NZOC supports a postponement uh, immediately. We would like that to happen before the four-week deadline that the IOC have announced. Depending on the athlete's situation, the impending postponement will either be a blessing or a curse. 36-year-old Nick Willis facing another year of pushing his body to get to Tokyo. I'm not sure it's harder on the body, it's harder on the mind for sure to um you get really nervous on going through the protocol of the call room and eyeing up your competitors and 
it's tempting. Hey, I'd, I'd love to be one of those coaches or fans on the sideline just enjoying being at the meet rather than going through all of those stresses. Although the two-time medalist who's pushing to make it to his fifth Olympics is using every ounce of his experience. Anticipating this decision would come, Willis has taken isolation to another level in the South Island so he can continue to train. We're fortunate just being down here in um, the middle of central Otago. There's no one around in Lake Kawea, so the trails are pretty empty and um, so I'll still be able to get outside and get some exercise and, and keep mentally and physically fit. Adapting to a challenge like no other as the Olympic flame is extinguished indefinitely. The New Zealand Warriors have returned home after losing to Canberra Raiders at the weekend and with a cloud of uncertainty over their future and that of the sport. The Warriors homeward bound this afternoon, with the NRL finally grounded by the coronavirus pandemic. It's devastating for our sports, devastating for New Zealand, it's devastating for our fans, members, none more devastating to the, to the players and their families and our staff. Now leaving the game facing another threat. This is a financial crisis. The NRL has reportedly told clubs it has a $150 million war chest, but that still leaves the game in a big financial hole. Some of the league's players even offering to take pay cuts at the 11th hour. If we have to take a little cut, then then so be it. You know, there's a lot of people out there that are obviously going to be doing it a lot harder than us and losing their jobs completely. Continuing as usual had become untenable. The closure of Queensland's state borders forcing the game's hand. The Warriors today putting on a brave face about the financial implications. No, we're positive about everything. We're not letting negativity come into our organisation at all. Yeah, I think there's you know, some relief amongst the, amongst the group getting home. But the NRL's admitted they needed to keep playing to keep the game alive. It's catastrophic. I don't think we've ever ever come across a financial crisis like this. You know, we're all affected. As Todd pointed out, we've led by example by uh, cutting our expenditure immediately and we're hoping the clubs will do the same very quickly. We've done this pretty much our whole lives. Uh, we work very hard and, um, you know, some of us have families and mortgages. Players now home and ready to hunker down while the league plans for a shortened competition between September and December. Right now, though, clubs bracing for financial shockwaves that will be felt for a long time to come. Chukai Sports continues with more after the break. Chukai Sports. Welcome back to Chukai Sports. The Wellington Phoenix is joining the long queue of Kiwis returning home after football's A-League put an end to its season. It was called off this afternoon as Australasian sports went into total lockdown. Newcastle with a win at home. The final whistle for the foreseeable future in Australasian sport. Keep their finals hopes alive. Those finals hopes and title aspirations now on hold for all 11 A-League teams, with the season now officially suspended from today. Mission complicated became mission impossible. Football Federation Australia will review the situation on April the 22nd. Today's postponement ending the Wellington Phoenix's temporary stay in Sydney. They were very disappointed to leave. They wanted to to carry on and do well in the finals, but you know, the reality is with, um, we had to bring them home. Wellington players will get home before New Zealand's uh, rules on their border controls come into place. The Phoenix had initially taken drastic measures to keep their promising campaign alive by opting to see out the rest of the season across the ditch. And without a word of a lie, there has not been one single complaint from the playing group. They just wanted to do their very best for the football club and they wanted to do the best for, for Wellington and for New Zealand. The team's five foreign players will be allowed through customs and the club will now look at its long-term viability. The Zealand government has a subsidy package in place that we'll have a look at as well to see if we are... Um, uh, whether we can apply for that. Despite the chaos, the players have remained upbeat. They've been excellent and so couldn't be happier. And like I say, if we can kick on again next season like we've been this season, then I think the other the rest of the other A-League needs, uh, needs to take they need, needs to be wary of the Wellington Phoenix next year. Every player has been given a training plan while in self-isolation, but it remains to be seen whether the third-placed Phoenix will ever get to see out their most promising campaign. And that ends Chukai Sports. The weather details coming up next. Chukai Sports. Chukai Sports.
This weather update is proudly brought to you by Money Plus. With you always. A look at the weather forecast for tonight and tomorrow in the southern region. Cloudy with a few showers and possible thunderstorms in Port Moresby. Rain showers and thunderstorms in Daru. Rain showers and possible thunderstorms in Kerama. And cloudy with a few showers in Alutau and Popandita. In the Mamasi region, cloudy with a chance of a shower or two in Lei. Cloudy with chances of a few showers in Middang, a shower or two in Wewak, and cloudy with a few showers in Vanimo. In the New Guinea Islands region, cloudy with a few showers in Loringa, cloudy with chances of a few showers in Kaviang, mostly fine weather in Kokopo, Rabaul, and Buka, mostly fine, although cloudy at times in Kimbe. And in the Highlands region, cloudy with rain showers right across the region in Mount Hagen, Garoka, Kundiawa, Mendi and Wabek. The weather update was proudly brought to you by Money Plus, with you always. And that's the new sport and weather for today, Tuesday, March 24th, 2020. Now, if you didn't know, the government has designated tomorrow as a special day of prayer and fasting for our country and the world against COVID-19. Tomorrow will be a normal working day and citizens are asked to be part of the prayers with their families in their homes. Public transport services will be running throughout the day in the nation's capital. On behalf of the entire MTV News team, pleasant viewing for the rest of the evening and good night.